My name is uh, Ela Sardaroğlu. I'm the um, Global Shelter Cluster Coordinator on behalf of uh, IFRC. And um, we have been uh, uh, having this slot uh, on the Wednesdays um, for our country uh, uh, profiles um, already for, uh, for some weeks. Uh, and this week, uh, we're actually very happy to be uh, focusing on a slightly different uh, topic. Um, a, a bit of an artistic one, but also very important uh, to uh, tell the story of a uh, humanitarian shelter. Um, so I'm very happy to welcome uh, all of you. Um, so we will be, uh, um, today we will be hearing a bit more about the stories behind the uh, photos uh, that have won the uh, shelter projects uh, competition this year. Um, and uh, we're joined by uh, three colleagues. Uh, actually, we were going to have four, but um, um, one of our uh, panelists, uh, unfortunately, is unwell. So we're joined by three colleagues who will be uh, talking to us about um, the the stories of the photos that they have taken. So uh, um, you will also have the chance to ask questions and uh, share your uh, thoughts. Uh, on, uh, on what we will see. So um, I just want to uh, give a bit of a background on uh, this competition. Uh, so as you know, Shelter Projects is one of the flagship uh, publications of the Global Shelter Cluster. It's been in existence in already um, for more than a decade now, and uh, we're approaching the official um, um, uh, publication and dissemination of this, uh, of the new uh, edition. and. Uh, well, with it, um, of course, uh, we had the photo competition, which is the third time that's, uh, that it's taking place. Um, the previous editions of the um, competition were in 2016 and uh, 18. So uh, it's every uh, two, three years we're able to also uh, do this. Uh, it was a latecomer uh, into the dissemination efforts, but uh, I think it's one of the uh, most appreciated ones uh, as well. And uh, um, we can uh, also say that it's quite popular because we have um, received 280 entries uh, uh, for four categories. So I think the ones who have uh, won it, maybe they didn't know, but uh, uh, it's not because uh, there were very few entries, uh, but it's really because uh, your pictures were telling the story that, um, that uh, we wanted to uh, bring across um, to um, uh, our audience. So this year um, there were uh, the focus was on the long-term impacts of uh, uh, of shelter programs. That's very much in line with the um, five-year strategy of the Global Shelter Cluster. Uh, so we had colleagues submitting uh, um, you know, on the topics of gender, diversity, environment and local building, and security of tenure. So that's also what we will hear uh, from. So just a couple of words, I think. Um, um, I said um, it's um, it's a bit of an artistic focus uh, today, but of course I was joking in the sense that uh, while um, uh, photography is of course uh, uh, an art that we uh, appreciate very much, it also plays an important role in telling the story of um, shelter and settlements. Uh, one of the things that uh, I personally um, have as a challenge uh, in my work is to tell the scope and the complexity of uh, shelter settlements and its impact uh, on people's lives. Um, and as you, of course, know, the famous saying goes that the picture tells a thousand uh, words. And uh, in that, um, having strong images, uh, having um, having uh, um, these uh, uh, pictures to tell our story is very important in our advocacy and dissemination efforts, also for our fundraising, also to bring across the complexity um, uh, of the programming, but most importantly, to tell the human story. Um, many people uh, see our sector as being a very technical one with uh, a lot of calculations and uh, construction, and it kind of uh, is removed from um, the human element. But the, I think nothing can be uh, uh, far further uh, from the truth. Um, and there's so much, um, so much that uh, uh, goes into making a house into a home. And I think uh, with these uh, 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 with these images, we can also tell the story to uh, to other people. Um, I also didn't know, but uh, um, the World Humanitarian Day is also apparently the World Photography Day. So that's also a nice uh, 
nice um, um, thing to uh, maybe note that uh, uh, with today's event, I wish then we had done it um, last week on the World Humanitarian Day, then it would have really marked uh, the importance. But uh, that also highlights uh, maybe um, um, so, um, a commonality between the two um, two sectors. So um, I I think um, without further ado, because you're not here to uh, um, listen to me. Um, I, without further ado, I would like to uh, hand it over to uh, Laura and our very esteemed um, panelists. So today we will be hearing from uh, Andrea Ruffini. Um, we will be hearing from Songbuna and uh, from Abdullah Mashrif. Like I said, we were also going to be joined by Nate uh, Webb, uh, but he's unwell. But I think Abdullah, he told us that uh, you know the story behind his um, uh, uh, photographs. So we will be uh, relying on you to tell us uh, what's been going on um, uh, in um, Nate's head when he took a picture. So um, if everyone is ready, we can, I think, uh, move over to the stories and the images of uh, today's event. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thanks so much, Ella, for the, for the welcome and for the introduction. No. Um, I'm just going to share my screen, so if you bear with me for a, a moment. Um, uh, there we go. Hopefully you can all, you can all see, see my screen now. So, so I'm just going to give a, a, a quick um, further introduction, building on, on what Ella was, was saying to kind of give a little bit more context to shelter projects and then and then run through to announce the, the winners and runners up for, for each of the, the four categories and the overall winner. Uh, and then we'll go to the to the panelists to hear the to hear a lot more about their, their approaches and, and the stories behind behind the images. Um, so so I'll, as um, as Ella was saying, Shelter Projects has been around for, for a number of years. The first edition was was published in, in 2008. Um, and through uh, across these um, now eight editions of, of Shelter Projects, with, if we include the, the upcoming edition, um, we've compiled um, nearly 300 case studies and, and, and response overviews. Um, and these are of case studies that have been implemented by, by over 60 organisations across over 70 countries. Um, so it's a real, uh, real collaborative effort between, you know, across across a whole range of, of, of different organisations. So a real, real collaborative effort. And the the aim of, of shelter projects is is really about about learning, about exchange, um, and through uh, through the sort of the the challenges and the strengths and weaknesses and the lessons that come out of each case study. Um, the aim is really to to improve future programming by learning from 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 past programming. And so so these are the 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 eight editions to date, with the last one on the end here being the the upcoming eighth edition, which will be launched very soon within the next uh, week or two. Um, and so, and in this next uh, in this upcoming edition, there's uh, 22 new case studies, um, five new response overviews, and five new uh, opinion pieces. Um, and across all editions, uh, if you if you have a browse through them, you'll see just how important um, photography is within within the case studies in in helping to to tell those stories and and to communicate about the projects, just as 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 Ala was saying. Um, and so, if you were to go to shelterprojects.org, then you can find all of these publications and also find um, you don't just have to download the publication, but you can search by uh, by country, and so they're all they're all compiled there. Um, and I also just wanted to quickly mention um, Shelter Projects Essentials, which is another Shelter Projects publication that was launched earlier in 2021. Um, it's quite different to the usual publications um, in that it, it's a very slim, very visual publication, and it um, takes a look back across all of the case studies that had been compiled to date across all of the past editions um, and looks to see what were the what were the messages, what were the learnings that came up uh, again and again um, and distills those into a set of, of key messages. And with Essentials, it's really trying to um, to essentially be a, a tool for for raising awareness for for learning and for advocacy around what makes good shelter and settlements programming um, and it's trying to reach a much wider audience and in trying to reach a much wider audience um, the sort of the, the the visual aspects of it are key so it's a very slim publication but there's a lot of um, a lot of images a lot of photography in there so I just sort of bring that up partly to 
to to sort of highlight just how important um, photography can be in, in, in reaching different audiences and, and communicating in, in different ways. Um, and so then to this year's uh, Shelter Projects Photo Competition. So as, as um, Ella said, there were four categories, so I won't run through each of those again. On the right hand side, you can just see a, a compilation of some of the many entries. As, as Ella mentioned, there were over 280 uh, entries received. Um, once the entries were received, there was then a process of, of public voting. So everyone was able to vote via the Shelter Cluster website. Um, and the voting essentially led to a to a shortlist. So based on the voting, we then compiled a shortlist of 10 photos. Uh, this were the top 10 for each of the four categories. Uh, and then the Shelter Projects Working Group or a panel of, of the working group members then determined the winners based on that shortlist. So it was a sort of multi-stage uh, process. Um, and in addition to all of the winners and runners up, there's there's lots of other fantastic photos in there. Um, so yeah, so I really encourage you all to uh, to check those out either on the Shelter Projects website or the Shelter Cluster website. All of the photos um, are available there. Um, uh, yeah, so moving on to the winners then. Um, I'm going to go through category by category and, and just sort of uh, announce these in turn. So. With the first category, um, the category being long-term impact of shelter, um, the winner of this uh, category was Peter Caton with this photo on the left here from, from WOW in, in South Sudan. Uh, I'm not going to read through each of the captions, but hopefully you can take a look as, as I go. So, so the captions were written by, by each of the photographers submitting the photos. Um, so yeah, so the winner for this one was uh, Peter Caton with this beautiful image here. Um, and the runner-up was Alfredo Sultana with this image on the right from, from Cox's Bazaar, Bangladesh. Um, category two, uh, gender diversity and inclusion. Um, the winner for that category was uh, Andrea Ruffini, who we're very lucky to have with us today as, as one of the panelists um, with this photo from, from Chad. So um, yeah, so it'll be fantastic to hear more from him about that and the context behind that. Um, and then the runner-up, in this category was Abdullah Al Mashrif, who's also um, with us today. So we'll hear more from him in a moment also. Um, so congratulations to, to both of you. Um, category three, environment and local building. Uh, the winner of this um, category was Nate Webb, who, who was due to be with us today, but unfortunately wasn't able to join in the end. Um, but, uh, but luckily Abdullah will be able to speak a bit to some of uh, Nate's photos as he also knows the, uh, the background to these. Um, and then Andrea has another photo that, that uh, that's also in this um, uh, category. So he's runner up in this category with the, another photo from Chad on the right there. Um, and then category four, security of tenure. Often the hardest category, there's, uh, it's quite hard to sort of uh, define or, or sort of find photos that, that can easily capture uh, the subject of security of tenure. But um, the winner for this uh, category is Bruna Song, who we're lucky to have with us today as, as a panelist as well. Um, so with this photo on, on the left from, from Cambodia. And the runner up was um, Jamari Guillermo from, uh, well, well, with this photo from, from the Philippines on the right. Um, so a whole a whole set of uh, fantastic photos there. So congratulations to to all. And then the final, um, the sort of the overall winner. So we have a winner per category, but then there's the overall winner. Um, and the overall winning photo was was another one by uh, Andrea Ruffini. So so this uh, photo from uh, from Chad also, which will be the photo on the front cover of the new edition of Shelter Projects. Um, so finally, then just to say. Um, to say yes, this is the new cover of the of the next edition of Shelter Projects with Andrea's photo there on the front. Um, so that's yeah on the front cover. The the other winning photos from each of the categories will appear on the back cover and also inside the publication. And also there's a whole range of other photos that were submitted in the competition um, that are used in in the introduction of the publication and, and other parts of the publication. So so a whole range of, of photos used. So a huge thank you to uh, to everyone who who submitted photos to the competition um, and big congratulations obviously to, to all of the, the winners and and runners up. Um, so that's all from me. I'm going to just stop sharing my screen and then hand over to Abdullah. Let me just um, sorry, bear with me for a moment. There we go. Um, so we'll hand out, I'll, I'll hand over to Abdullah now. So Abdullah, if you want to share your screen while I um, 
just quickly introduce you. Um, so Abdullah Al Mashrif is a, a Bangladeshi photographer and filmmaker, uh, and he's been working with IOM Bangladesh as a multimedia assistant uh, for the last three years. And so he's going to talk both to his photo uh, and to the photo from um, that was submitted by by Nate. So over to you. Hello everyone. So can can you guys hear me? Yep. We can hear you and we can see your screen, but if you could share it uh, full screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. OK, so um, hi, everyone. This is Mashrif from Bangladesh. So at the moment, I'm going to share Nathan's work with you guys. So this is a photo from the bamboo treatment facility which is located in Cox's Bazar, Ukiya. Uh, uh, this is one of the coolest place uh, for <laughs> for like a uh, uh, cool structure beside the camps. Like it's a huge facility. Uh, we uh, we treat, treat the bamboos over there. And uh, those uh, treat, this treatment help to uh, expand the lifetime of the bamboos. So as it says here, the BTF has supported over 10,000, uh, like thousands, lakhs of uh, Rohingyas and host community houses throughout the shelter programs. And uh, yeah, these all these bamboos are uh, collect, like, uh, collected from locally. Mm, so these are all from Bangladesh. And then uh, we treat it, uh, we treat it and we send it to the refugees. We use it to make the shelters and other constructions. Uh, and uh, yeah to the host communities and everywhere so this is uh, this is a big thing for the Bangladeshi mission yes that's all any questions guys i think we'll have um i should have said sorry uh um, that we'll have a, we'll have a Q and A following all three of the all three of the panelists. So, if you want to continue, um, yeah, both in relation to Nate's photos and then also on 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 yours, um, Abdullah, and then and then after all three of you have have presented, then then we'll have a Q and A. So, to anyone who's um who's on the call, if you have questions as we go along, please feel free to either save them up for the Q and A at the end or, or write them into the chat as they pop into your head. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Thanks. So one thing I'm, I want to add on this uh, photographs. Uh, so this bamboo treatment facility, this is uh, very environmentally friendly. The chemicals we use here for treating the bamboos, those can be used as fertilizers. And the entire process is like, uh, it goes for two, like I said, uh, like two days, and then it extends the, uh, the lifetime of bamboos, like insanely, like, uh, with a, a, a bamboo without treatment, it lasts for maybe hardly one year, uh, but a treated bamboo last goes for like three to six years. So, which have what happens like in the end, the shelter construction costs and then maintaining costs, everything goes down. So, yeah, uh, it's a uh, very um, very fascinating, and this is one of the biggest bamboo treatment facility in the southeast uh, region. So, yes. Okay, now I'm gonna talk about the, my photo. So this is Mohammed Ayub. Uh, so I took this photo uh, on the very um, on like when uh, so in the in the Rohingya refugee camp they are like cash cash based interventions. So people work there for like cash for work activities happens all the time. You guys can see the screen, right? Hello. Yeah, we do. Yes, we can. Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, it was taken. Uh, uh, I was on the field for getting some shots of the cash for work activities and uh, uh, and then after reaching field, I got to know that uh, now the disabled people well, person with disabilities, disabilities, they are also getting chance to work uh, for cash, uh, cash for work. So on that end, I asked for a few volunteers, asked the volunteers for like any uh, cases or like any 
characters for such like who has like uh, disabilities then i found him so this guy is very interesting uh, uh, rather than like uh, except working for the um, cash for work he also is a, he's also a teacher i'm going to show some other photos from his uh, house like this is his house then with his kids and him teaching arabic studies to the kids so this is uh, he's mostly basically a teacher and uh, apart from that uh, he also worked for the cash for work activities and uh, to be frank it's a very unique thing for them for him because not all the agencies offer them to work and uh, like it means a, like as he explained it means a lot to him because he's directly contributing to the community so yeah it was a it was a amazing experience for me as well to like like to document him and like see see his uh, stories yeah great thanks so much Abdullah. um i'm not very good, very good in explaining things but yeah no no that was that was great and i'm sure that as we as we go through there may be other specific questions that that come your way as well towards the end but thanks very much for for that and just to give a, a quick plug to link to the to the upcoming edition of shelter projects as well just to say that um there's actually two case studies in the upcoming edition from cox's bazaar one of which is specifically a case study that focuses on the bamboo treatment facility um so for anyone who wants to find out more about how that facility uh works then check out the new edition once it's once it's launched um so moving on then next we're going to move to um to Buna Song, who, um, whose photo won the uh, uh, category four, the security of tenure um, category. Um, so over to you, over to you, Buna. Um, oh, sorry, I should say a few words of introduction. Um, Buna is the Marketing and Communications Manager at Habitat for Humanity, uh, Cambodia. Over to you. Okay, thank uh, Laura and uh, hello everyone and good evening from Cambodia. It is, uh, a great honor for me to join with this event and to meet all these amazing uh, photographer. And yes, uh, my name is Bunna, so I'm the marketing and communication manager of, uh, at Habitat for Humanity Cambodia. And I've been working at Habitat Cambodia for almost four years already. So uh, today I, I would like to talk more about my photo, and it also I want to invite you all to to like yeah visually travel to Cambodia and to see what is the story behind all of this photo. So uh, to me, uh, when we are talking about a photo, for me, it a photo is, uh, it, it speaks by itself and it was a thousand words for me. So, and for me, for myself, actually, I'm not really a photographer, but it just, I love it. I just love taking photo and it one of my favorite hobby. And it's also part that I love the most from my work. So as a communication major, so I need to, well, I need to travel with my colleague to the field, to the community, to meet the people, to 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 make the story more alive to to our audience. Yeah, and also through the the photography, it it is uh, an opportunity for me that I I can have show what is the need of the one world uh, Cambodian family that they, they need, and it's also that I can show what what has been uh, changed to them through uh, our work and through, uh, through our intervention. And for example, if uh, our team or uh, we, we present, for example, like, okay, we want to show them what we have done to our project, to our work. And if I just show them the data, the tech like this, so I'm sure that people, they just read and some, they don't want to read. But if we present like what we have done uh, as a picture, as a photo, for example, like this one, so they can see what we have done, what, uh, what the family has been, uh, chain uh, through our support and and with the detail you can see everything uh, they face the environment the uh, the livelihood so it can show through all the uh, the photo and this is uh, what uh, have that for humanity cambodia has been uh, working on in cambodia so 
just for your information, like Habitat for Humanity Cambodia, we are also part of the Habitat uh, for Humanity International, and we begin our operation in Cambodia since 2003 with a reason that, yeah, we hope everyone have, has a decent place to live. And since 2003, we have been served to more than 100,000 families through our intervention. Yeah. And as you can see, this is a, a Cambodia map where we highlight us the area that we have been working on. And the photo that I take this uh, one in the bottom bar is uh, the, the uh, that you can see here. Yeah. And through our work, we have uh, we have uh, uh, as you can see here in the photo. So it is part of uh, what we are doing now. So we uh, yeah, provide a sexual home uh, to the family for them to rec recover from any disaster or other shock. We also work with the uh, to increase access to the bus facility. We also improve the economic resilience from the livelihood training. Uh, you will hear more about the story that related to all this work that we have done. We also increase uh, the awareness on the land and housing right in Cambodia. We also build the capacity of the community uh, in response to the disaster uh, through our PASA approach. We also work with the, uh, the government with another partner to uh, engage them in the solid bus management and we also engage with both local and international volunteer to advocate about the land and, and housing. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, you, you may want to know like, yeah, what the family look like, what is the story behind them. So if you if you can see here in the photo, the top left here, you see that the family of uh, Na, Na is the mother of all these uh, children. So if you can see that photo, this is the, the, the old house. So you see the, the this is the situation where most of uh, the one world Cambodia uh, they, they have with kind of this house. And then through uh, you can see the photo below. This is where the community where they are living, and you can see the the how the the how that uh, we has been uh, uh, support to them. And also you can see yes one of the photo during that uh, that the session you can see them through the window with this little one. So they are being like. Uh, friendly and helpful, and they they really happy. Uh, uh, you know when when uh, we are there, and we just uh, asking them about the way uh, how they like, uh, how they study, and it is a great experience to meet all of uh, these uh, uh, children. And it's been one year after I travel with my colleague to the family. So. So uh, currently, as you can see, this is the photo. Uh, actually, this is not my photo. This is a photo that sent to our team by a village chef, actually. So because uh, during the pandemic, we cannot travel to the field by ourselves. So that how we work with the local community and they can support us sometimes. So I've been with uh, talk with them and, and the family, they have been improved through the lining hole. They, they no longer travel from place to place to, to, to search for uh, a job or looking for a job. So. They, they start, uh, uh, aside from housing, we providing them like a grant where they can raise the chicken and through the chicken, they can start to raise like a pig and then they grow vegetable and this can support them, the livelihood during this uh, pandemic in, in Cambodia as well. Yeah, so uh, that's it from my side and I would like to thank everyone and the team who organized this and especially to, uh, yeah, our Cam have the Cambodia colleague that also part uh, in this uh, uh, event too. And if you want to find out about my work, uh, my other photo, and also what have the community have done, you can follow us on this on this social media. Okay, thank you, Laura. That's all from me. Great, thanks very much, Vina. Um, and just a reminder to everyone that if you do have questions um, coming to mind, then please feel free to write them into the chat uh, as we go along. Um, and then uh, lastly, then I'm just going to hand over to um, to Andrea Ruffini. So Andrea uh, not only won the the overall uh, competition with the with the winning photo, but also won um, the category two um, uh, had the category two winning photo and the category three uh, runner up photo. Um, so he'll be speaking to a number of of these different photos. Um, Andrea is a an Italian filmmaker, photographer, and multimedia producer producer. Uh, and he's collaborated with TV networks, UN agencies and NGOs, producing so social documentaries and photo report reportages in Africa, Latin, Amer Latin America and Asia. Uh, so over to you, Andrea. OK, hello, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for inviting me and uh, congratulations 
to all the participants because I've seen really, really great photos, not only from a documentation point of view, but they really have artistic value too, that it's important at the same time for the diffusion and everything. So I will uh, share my screen so I can have a little talk about the photos and everything. And uh, here I was in uh, Chad, Lake Basin Chad, for IOM Chad. We were working on a shelter assistance program in uh, December 2020. This community is a community Dum Dum, it's called, it's a site Dum Dum near the community for Kulum. It's on west of Bagasola. And uh, we were there to shoot some videos and uh, some photo reportage. So you can see the, the village and the, the site and everything. Uh, as it was before the, the construction. And uh, this is a little curiosity. She's the leader, the site leader. She's a woman. It's a very uncommon for, uh, for the place to have a, a woman leader, leader, female leader. So it was a very very interesting relationship that we had. She was really open-minded, uh, bright and smart, and uh, the collaboration with her and the whole the community was fantastic. This is the, the photo that, uh, you know, it's the overall winner of the, the categories. And uh, the people there, they were building the shelter that um, have been uh, given by them by uh, uh, to them by uh, IOM Chad in the form of shelter kits and then built by the community itself with some uh, specialized worker but the community participated a lot in the construction in all the process and in this particular moment this woman um, she's called Kaudi uh, she was participating in the building of the walls of, of the shelter because this is uh, what the women groups do when they build uh, the, their own houses and also the shelter provided by IOM. And uh, in this photo, I try to put the focus on the work of the woman, Kaudi, but at the same time, giving uh, an impression that there were other people working and uh, there were all women. They, they came from uh, a site that was not so far from uh, uh, from uh, the place, this, but they were attacked by Boko Haram and other forces, and they were forced to flee after they killed some of their children and a lot of their cattle. And it took them four months in hiding and walking and having to arrive at the site. So they stayed there. Uh, when we went there, they, they were arrived at uh, the same uh, by four months and they were staying there and uh, try to start a new life. So this is this is her, so we can see her directly in, in her face. And they, you can see the women were participating in the building of the of the shelters. There were several shelters, as you can see in the photos. These photos uh, uh, represent the approach that we have when we do this kind of reportage and videos. We try to, this is another site, but in the same production. We always try to involve the communities and the people of the communities in the creative process and the production process from the beginning to the end, in the sense that uh, we decide uh, who the protagonist of the stories will be, where we will be filming, what we will be, will be filming. And sometimes when we have the time, we also teach to the usually young boys and girls from the communities how to use cameras and take some picture themselves. And then we comment the picture with them and everything. We did in this particular moment, we did, didn't have so much time to do that, so they were just staying with us and uh, taking some photo, photos and everything. But what I usually do when I have the time, it's to form them, to make a, 
video production course and form them to use cameras to develop stories and to be able to do basic video editing too and to produce videos community based to give a community say boy, the community a voice so they can really participate in, in participate in the whole project process so you can see other children that are filming and shooting the the building product and we also involve not only the children and the young boys and girls but also the, the the whole community also adults and everything so they can really participate in the in the in the process in the whole process so uh, we can see other women that are working on the shelter uh, building construction because we arrive in the second photo that is the the winner of the gender inclusion part and uh, we can see that the women are involved in the construction of the shelter in the building process, but at the same time, they have this traditional uh, way of uh, weaving straw to make mats that uh, they use for the ceiling, to make the walls and everything. So all the women groups, not only from the community, but also from community around the, the site are involved in this uh, process of building and producing materials that are used so part of the income goes to them too and in general all the all the materials that are used in the building in the shelter the video of the shelter are from our locals and the, the woods are from cert certified company that they don't damage the environment so we can see they that are working to prepare all the materials for the building of the shelters. And these are another part where we can see that the community that is involved in the building process, they are uh, working on the, uh, the wood and the material that is provided by IOM coming from certified comp companies. You can see here in these photos that is just before the photo that uh, was the runner up in the building and, envi and environment uh, category. You can see how the houses were before on the right side and the building of the shelter, how they will be in the after. This is the photo that was the runner up. Uh, I take these photos. Uh, after a discussion with the people that were involved, we tried a lot of angles, a lot of situations. So at the end, they meet with them. We decided among the photos that we took, this was the best one to represent their involvement in the construction. All the people, they are from the community itself. And we can see in the same uh, site, the, the the shelter that are being built and this is the final shelter that uh, how it's going and these are just the children that were uh, collaborating with us to do some photos and uh, and videos too so i can i would like also to drop some links of the video uh, of the video that we made so you can see in the message in the chat i will drop some link to the video so you can see at the end the video that we produce and thank you everyone if you have question you are free to thank you great thank you thanks very much andrea um yeah, just to say with the, in the Chad context, in the upcoming additional shelter projects, we have two case studies from Chad, not specifically of that of that uh, program, but but um, but two Chad case studies. So if you're interested in in the Chad uh, uh, context or programming in Chad, then yeah, then please do check those out. Um, so we now have about 15 minutes for for Q and A and for discussion. Um, I don't know if anyone in the um, if any participants have 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 questions. If so, please do just um, just 
raise your hands or, or type them into the chat. Um, also, if uh, amongst the panelists, if you have any questions for each other, then then feel free to um, to raise those as well. Um, I can see one hand up. Is that Daniele? Daniele, go ahead. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, everybody, for the participation of this um, context. Uh, congratulations to everybody. I have a question for the panel, and and my question is: I mean, taking picture of of uh, of people beneficiary in this case, um, I mean, from my side, uh, is always a bit tricky. I mean, um, it's not always uh, an exercise that is done with. Uh, uh, that is an easy exercise. Uh, sometimes beneficiaries are not willing to get uh, pictured. Um, sometimes um, is is also a bit of uh, I, have, I have a bit difficulties on on taking a picture of a person, even if the person agrees, because I feel like I'm stealing something from them. Or uh, um, and, and my question is, uh, how do you um, what is what are the um, some techniques in which we can um, ensure that the person, um, the contribution of the person, of the picture that we are taking. But at, at the end, I mean, is the person is the object of, or the subject of the of the picture. So, um, to, for them to understand what we are doing, how we are doing it, and what are the techniques also to to build trust among the community in order to get access to the community and also arrive to let's say, uh, take shots of the, uh, even the, 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 their, their private life, because sometimes we get into the shelter, not just outside the shelter. Um, so if you have any advice or any technique that you usually do in order to get this trust. Thank you. Okay, okay so. So yeah, Andrea, please go ahead and then and okay, then sorry. <laughs> Abdul, if you want to add, then then please do. No, no, no. Abdullah can can talk. Sure, let's do that. Abdul, Abdullah, would you like to to address that question first? I think Andre Andre will Andre will answer it better than me. I believe he's more like into the fields. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm also want, I also want to listen from listen it from him. Okay, so so uh, so to speak. Uh, generally it takes time <laughs> and uh, respect and understanding of uh, how people's life is and understanding that it takes time also for them because maybe they have other things to do. I'm not talking about just photography in particular that maybe can be quicker, you know, but video and producing, you know, a photo reportage at something. So what we usually do, it's stay with them a lot of time before starting and talk with them about what they would really like to be you know, presented, would really like to uh, shoot. And uh, with them, we decide what is important, particularly for them. And we explain a lot of what we do and what we want to do in this case. So if they really, if they don't know anything or they don't understand, we stay with them, we, we, we explain until they really are, they, they know what, what we are doing. And we try to have you know, acceptation in the community and uh, and if we involve them even also in the, the production pro process directly, you know, letting them taking photos, organizing you know the set or something like that, decide which part will be more important than others. That we'll spend that time with them. This is the way you know to, to show. Involvement that we have with them, the respect that we have for them, the understanding, and uh, usually it works, but it takes time. The problem in this kind of documentation that if you have not always the time that you need. And uh, fortunately, with uh, Ion Chad, Chad, it worked this way. They give you time, they give you the time, they understand this kind of process. It doesn't happen 
all the time. So that's really important. Great, thanks. Bruna, do you want to add something onto that? Yeah, thank Laura, and uh, also thank for the uh, question. So, uh, with uh, Habitat for Humanity, so we have a strong guideline with all of the photo that uh, we shoot. So normally, before any other photo that uh, we use, well, we need to have the consent from the family. And if we're taking a, a children photo, normally we need to have a, a consent from the parent. And and. With that consent, we already explain to them what we are going to use the photo from. And and normally before, for example, when I travel all around our project area, before I shoot the photo, the first thing I need to do is asking, are you okay if I take the photo? If they say no, or they are not okay, then yeah, we cannot take the photo. Yeah, so that's uh, uh, what uh, uh, I have done uh, from my side. Yeah, thank you. If I can add something, yeah, of course, this is the procedure. I totally agree with that. That's the basis, you know, to have the consent. Yeah, that's we always do that. At the same time, uh, I think that I think that's important that we try to do almost all the time when it's possible. We give them back. Not all we show them uh, what we are shooting, the photos and everything, but a lot of time we give them back the you know the videos, the photo printed, and everything. So it's something that I will do. Uh, I, I'm going back to Chad, so I will give all the people the, the printed photos that were the, the winner of the uh, the competition, so everyone will be happy. This is some, something that a lot of time is missing, to, to, to give back what you are uh, what you feel, what you're doing, because communities, a lot of time, they, they feel, you know, uh, not in, really included, because they they don't see what you are doing at the end. So particularly speaking about videos, but photographies too. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for those responses. Super important, as you say, to have the participatory processes and to have that, that loop back. Uh, yeah. um, the other question uh, in the chat from, from Bernadette, who says um, that it, it was mentioned earlier that, that it's uh, difficult to capture secure tenure in a photograph. Um, and how would you advise us on how to on how to show that or how to capture it in photos? The the question in the chat mentions Andrea specifically, but I know that it was it was Bruno in fact who won the secure tenure question. So maybe we could pass to Bruno first, and then if either Abdul or Andrea, add them, we'll be too soon. But over to you. Uh, Thank you, Laura. Actually, uh, yeah, I uh, would like to introduce you all to that when that is actually uh, my national director, and I think that uh, May is this. Uh, we also from have the community, so I think it's good to hear from uh, Andrea for for the experience. Actually, I really want to learn from Andrea on that subject too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> so. Um... Yeah, that, that's not an easy question because it's really, it's really not always the same situation. So it really depends on, you know, on the site that you want to, to, to film or photograph and uh, on the situation that you find and everything. I don't think that there is one receipt on that, so I, I can't tell you, you go there and do that. It really depends on the situation. And what you can do is to know really well the environment, the situation, and how it's going on. And I think that sooner or later, the right photo will come out. But it's there is no one, one way to, to do that because it's really, really a lot of variables in that. So just stay there and talk with the people and see by yourself and find you know your inspiration and if you have time time it's really key when you do this kind of thing. maybe if you're lucky the, the right photo just come in the first five minutes because it's everything is there but it's not usually like that so you really need to think and to know the, the situation Great, thank you. Um, I can see that another hand is up, so I'm just going to hand over to, to Jonas if you want to ask your, your question, but the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Laura. 
And I think it's more like a comment is also like uh, congratulations to all of you. And so they are really like really nice pictures. It's not only the message behind, but it's also the composition, the colors, the sharpness. It's, it's a really nice work. Um, but I think maybe in the same line that uh, Andrea say that is uh, sometimes it's very difficult to I mean, the photography is a kind of like a subject, subjective thing. So maybe you find the message after you take the, the pictures and not before taking the picture. So it's kind of a process and, and, and yeah, you have to have at the time, the, the right time, the right moment to, to take, uh, uh, to capture the, the moment. So probably, I don't know, I don't know if all of you, you, um, I mean, all, all your pictures are now in one category, but I don't know when you took the, these pictures, you were thinking, oh, OK, these are the, the category uh, of my picture. I don't know. It's, it's, you, know you, you do the process after having the pictures. So, uh, yeah. But it's, yeah, I just wanted to comment that it's really nice work and, and, and congratulations. So over to you, Laura. Great, thanks Jonas, thanks for that. Um, I think that would be the, the start of a whole other super interesting discussion, but I'm a bit conscious of the time. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I just I just want to say a huge thank you again to, to all of the, the panelists um, and congratulations to, to you all and to your other fellow winners who, who weren't able to, to join us uh, today. Uh, I'm gonna hand back over to Ella now for some, some closing remarks. Uh, so Ella, back. Back over to you. OK, thank you very much. Um, like I said, um, this week's um, session was uh, was quite different um, uh, to the other ones that we have been having. And uh, that's also thanks to having a slightly maybe different uh, crowd. Um, so thank you very much, uh, um, our panelists, uh, uh, for joining us and also um, sharing with us your thoughts and uh, and the way that you have looked at things and how you have uh, captured um, the stories. So that's very much appreciated, uh, especially for colleagues who are maybe more in the audiovisual side of the humanitarian work. I would um, very much like to encourage you to keep thinking of uh, shelter and uh, communities and how those could be uh, reflected in your pictures, because we will definitely be uh, uh, producing uh, further um, uh, editions of the shelter project. So I hope that uh, we will be seeing good images from you, but also from uh, everyone else who have maybe now taken some um, some tips uh, from you on how to capture a good story. And I think it's also important uh, to remind ourselves that uh, you have really taken uh, many, many pictures uh, before you probably had this uh, perfect one. So uh, we should also keep uh, trying and not get uh, discouraged by uh, maybe not catching the right uh, right square or the person who's walking in front of the um, camera and uh, keep trying. This is something also we we do quite a lot with uh, with our shelter interventions. Um, sometimes we feel like we're back to square one with uh, a lot of our programs, but um, we don't lose the spirit and we keep uh, trying. And every time we try to do uh, much better and improve our work. And uh, thank you very much also for helping us uh, communicate uh, the contents and the spirit of uh, our work and uh, the people that we try to serve. So uh, a big um, thank you and congratulations. Um, and with that, I think we will be closing uh, today's session. I'd like to remind everyone that next week we're going to be going back to our usual format of uh, hearing from our country um, um, clusters. And next week it will be, um, again, a very interesting one, a very challenging environment um, will be uh, the Libya cluster. Uh, so I hope um, on the 1st of September you will be joining us uh, on the on the same uh, time and um, you'll be able to uh, hear from, uh, from how things are uh, being done and how things are going in Libya. And uh, we still have another, um, um, I don't know how many exactly, uh, I think four or five uh, planned um, in the coming weeks. So uh, I hope you'll be able to join and, um, and uh, learn from the exchange. So with that, um, I think, ah, look, very good timekeeping. Usually I go over time, so uh, 
<laughs> I will then just uh, take advantage of this and um, and uh, we'll close the session. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here today. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.